Welcome to Thunder. Like Jeff Here said, we go. Before we get even get to it, like Jeff said at the beginning yes. of the podcast, we're going to try to be as spoiler free as possible, but it's pro- there's going to be here and there, maybe spoilers. <laughs> oh, so oh just- full disclosure, I'm jumping right into spoilers. Oh, so I, I know you are. If you have not seen this movie, you need to get out of here. Pause. Yeah. Take, yeah. take Pause an hour it, and 59 minutes. It. Yeah, watch it and then come back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Who's kicking us off? Well, here's my question. What do you guys want to start with? Because there's so many different directions where we could start. How about we start with overall thoughts and then okay. we could jump into the nitty gritty and okay. then okay. maybe we could circle back to the state of the MCU. Uh, uh, I like that because there is okay. one bigger question that kind of pertains to all of this. Mm-hmm. And then there's a, a, a second question that that's more so a, a fun question. And if we have time for that, we'll get to Lindsay's it. But question. It is a Love fun those. question. Yeah, um, I would say I I certainly did did it, I up this way. Overall, I enjoyed it. I thought I thought it was good. Um, my biggest critique of it, I under, so I understand you're tr- you you're technically supposed to go into this movie with the idea that it's a comedy. That was part of my problem is like, I, I get that. I, 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 for me personally, I always have a tough time getting into the idea that Thor is a comedic character or that setting with his movies can be, or it's meant to be funny. Yeah. I don't mind comedy in the MCU, but I think that's also part of the reason why it's such a tough time with Thor Ragnarok at first. Cause full disclosure, I was not a fan of that movie at all when I first saw it. I, I didn't like it. You now it's one of my favorites. Very much in the minority with that initial reaction. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that that was that was my full disclosure when I first saw Thor Ragnarok. Did not like it at at all. Action yeah. was great, just I hated the idea of Thor being a comedic character. Mm-hmm. Then then I got over it. But for this, there was comedy, and then there was too much comedy. So and, and that's where this movie falls. I I love the action. I thought Gore the bitcher, uh, bitch. <laughs> Gore the butcher, what but played by Christian Bale. He was as scary as he could be and perfectly portrayed. I thought he was phenomenal. Did Action better, was amazing. Not to shit on Christian Bell. Yeah. He did a little better job in the voice front than he did with Batman. So, Yeah, that, that's like, a fair assessment. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely no, that's fair. had a creepier voice in this one. Yeah, yes. um, no, which again, I love though. But yeah. overall, there was too much comedy for me. Again, I understand it's supposed to be quote-unquote comedy. Too much comedy though. I don't know how, if you guys had the same reaction. So... I'm going to take a little trip back in history before I jump into uh, Love and Thunder. You know, the Thor character has had a very compelling evolution throughout the course yeah. of the MCU. With the original movie, I thought Thor, I'm just going to call it Thor 1 for the sake of clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Thor 1 was a pretty solid movie. You know, Kenneth Branagh had to introduce this character with almost a very Shakespearean feel, a larger than life feel of this alien god and trying to find a way to make him relatable. I thought everything on Asgard was very cool in Thor 1. I thought the content on Earth was a little bit wishy-washy, but pound for bound, it was a good introduction. Thor The Dark World, like many of you, did not resonate with me. I thought it was dreary. I thought it was dull. The villain was incredibly forgettable, and there just really wasn't that much character evolution from the first one. And then when I heard that Taika Waititi was going to be taking over the franchise, I thought to myself, okay, this could be pretty interesting. We Mm -hmm. have a director who is very unique, who's had a lot of compelling movies and might bring a new feel to this character, which I thought he did tremendously in Thor Ragnarok. You know, I understand that maybe the comedic effect is not everybody's cup of tea, but Thor was so dull and boring in the dark world that I was okay with this very fresh comedic take that we saw in Ragnarok, Ragnarok, and he felt like he had a true purpose. When talking about Love and Thunder, I agree. I don't think this movie should be getting flamed as much as it is. I think it has a 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's it not does. a 68% movie. 67. Yeah. But the problem is, I don't think that this movie had a lot of purpose because it really didn't change much of the character from what we saw in Ragnarok. If anything, I think it made it for the worse because we now have a Thor who is a dummy, who's a dope. In yeah. Love and Thunder, he was an idiot, which you know is funny and really helps with the comedic nature of the movie. But I feel like it's kind of character assassination to make him such a fool 
when in reality, what we saw is a pretty well composed Thor over the past couple of, of movies. So it was way too heavy on the comedy for my liking. You know, the, a lot of the humor did hit, but I thought a lot of it was just kind of lackluster and repetitive, especially and early not only in the that. Film. It was again just it was just too much. Like, there's some unnecessary jokes and lines. Like perfect prime example. I get again comedic purposes. I get it, but the whole running gag of Thor having a quote-unquote almost relationship with Mjolnir and then Stormbreaker, I thought that was, was way too much. Like it was way too it was much. Funny it was the funny first the first time, time, but you don't it was funny the first time, but you don't need to have that as you a don't have to keep, movie. Yeah. yeah. I, I like laughed the horse. first time I enjoyed it, but yeah, that and the goats. Like if you do it once <laughs> and that's it, that's a really good comedic thing. But beating right. us over with a dead horse is brutal. Now let me yeah. start with the positives. Christian Bale was fantastic as Gore the God Butcher. He was scary. He was frightening. I don't know if his character really belonged in a movie like this. Tonally, he was probably the scariest villain in terms of his appearances that we've seen in the MCU. And he's in prop, maybe, but and he's in the most comedic movie. So you're going back and forth between this yeah. very frightening villain and this movie that's supposed to be very lighthearted, which was a little bit confusing for me. So it, right, I, I get what you're saying, yeah. Um, you know, I thought that the return of Natalie Portman was was fine. It was solid. Seeing her as the Muddy Thor was was very unique. I thought that her character was abysmally boring in the first two movies. And that's no fault of Natalie Portman, who I think is a very good actress. It's just she didn't have a lot to do. I liked no. that she had more to do in this movie. The setup of her character was interesting. A, an individual who is suffering through cancer who needs to find a way to get a second shot at life, which I do think the introduction of her becoming Thor was or Mighty Thor was very, very rushed. But I just don't think they had enough time to fully flesh that out before just no. throwing her in the movie. And I will say about that, actually, because I, I was watching a video earlier on Thor, uh, Love and Thunder, and they actually um, touch on the fact that not like one or two, de- there's multiple details and if you want to call it storylines that were pulled directly from comics, mm-hmm. uh, such if as, how goes, um, how, for example, how uh, Jane Foster becomes Mighty Thor. She had cancer in the comics, apparently. And uh, Mjolnir came to her in her greatest need and greatest fight. So I, no, I thought that was a nice touch. Um, there's a one scene where they're where they found uh, uh, Siv um, on that like. Or, or, Lady I'm sorry, Sif. It, yeah, it was Lady Siv. Uh, I don't know if it was on that snowy planet I, or, or, uh, or world, but there was a huge creature. Mm-hmm. Um, that, you know, they took that directly from the comics. Some of those callbacks, I I thought it was awesome and and visually very visually pleasing i thought it was tremendous though yeah. whitmer i want to get your your overall takes like on or opinion on like you know, what your first you know thoughts were like throughout the, the entire movie so for me going into it i especially when you see taika wakiti is mm. the director pretty much you have an idea that's going to be a more comedic kind of yeah. because it's be a he strange. has a very he has a little a, strange a little strange and he has a very comedic tone to his movies um yes. so with that and even though the guardians were in it for like like a minute in terms of the whole movie they were only really in it for like the opening sequence mm-hmm. um i had kind of had the feeling like oh this is going to be like a fun kind of movie with thor and my thought was oh it's going to be a couple like lighthearted kind of moments here and there. Maybe there'll be like an epic battle, something like that. Um, I didn't really know much about the villain and Christian Bale going into it um, just because I didn't look at any trailers because to me, I feel like trailers at this point and we can get to it on a different podcast later, maybe this one. For what it's worth, they did not dive too deep into Gore the God Butcher in the trailers, which I appreciated. We just yeah. saw like a lot of stills of Christian yeah, Bale yeah, looking yeah, freaky. Yeah. So they they I had did like his back. I did like them introducing him at the beginning, kind of giving you. His I thought that was cool. I, I, I thought I like it was a cool thing. like opening kind of thing. Yeah, yeah but and it's not like you spend like a whole like thirty seconds here. He is. You spend a good, you know. Obviously, it's like the opening, you know, sh- uh, opening scene and everything, and not even just one scene. It's multiple scenes before you get to even the the opening crawl, the the, the uh, Marvel theme playing for the first time. Um, so no, I, I thought that was great though, and and again, because you want to understand the villain's motives, and I thought they, for the most part, again. Was it just like when, when you said with uh, my, uh, Jane is Mighty Thor's you know backstory? Was it a little rushed? You could argue that, but mm-hmm. 
this may be this was, was a little more. I feel like his was a little more not thought out, but a little more gave a little more time to that than the mighty Thor part. Of yeah, that. no, that, that I agree with. And, Here's and my gripe. Then it probably could need a little bit more time for him. Here's my gripe. Um, what do you think? What movie, comic book movie, is regarded as the best comic book movie of all time? It's not Marvel. Three. Is it Watchmen? Two. Not Watchmen. One. It's not like X Men or anything like that, is it? No, it's not. That's the Dark Knight. Marvel. The Dark Knight is probably um, considered the best comic book movie ever made. It's it's sure, it's, sure. it's in the top sure, sure, ten sure. of ever, movies yeah. ever made. No, for that I agree. But it's a comic book movie. It's a Batman movie. Of yeah. course, oh, it's okay. a comic well, book well, movie. Well, 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 like. Okay. Well, well, all right. That, that's Let me get idea. to my point. Heath Ledger's playing Joker. Who? What? Where else is he taking? That Whitmer. From? I'm glad you brought that up. Would we all agree that Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker is one of the best adaptation, or not? Not necessarily adaptations, 100%. but performances 100%. as a villain ever. Hundred percent easily. And let me tell you why I liked it so much. We had a character who was evil for the sake of being evil. Marvel is yet to do that. They always have to have a justification yeah. for their villains. While I appreciate that Gore the God Butcher had the motivation of a god not saving him and his daughter, why can't we just have a comic book character who's just blatantly evil and wants to do evil things? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like Gore the God Butcher, his freaking name is the God Butcher. You don't need to back that up with an explanation. Why um, can't he just be a madman like yeah. the Joker who wants to kill for the sake of killing? That is a villain that frightens me. And right, yeah. listen, while I appreciate that Marvel villains like, you know, Killmonger and the Vulture and Thanos all have reasoning, whether you agree with that reasoning or not behind their motives, I get that that's important for character development. This would have been a great opportunity to just have a villain who is a freaking madman for the sake of being a madman. But they wanted to have the daughter's storyline and a yada, yada, yeah. yada. But I think it's, that's it's my that take. It's that mindset of trying to humanize, I feel, exactly. those right. villains. And, and that's fine. That's, it's, uh, yeah, that's it's completely okay. fine. I, I agree. It would be nice to have one villain, and this would have been a perfect opportunity. The other problem I kind of have just realizing it, we didn't get any butching, you know? <laughs> yeah, you want to see that, more like, butching? <laughs> I, I do. I would love to see some butching. Ah. Well, I mean, he butchered <laughs> the we were, god in the beginning. Well, yeah, but that was that really, was really it. It. When you really think that, about it. Yeah, you see, the, you see like little clips of it, like when they're like looking at the computer or whatever of like God's yeah. going down. Or yeah, like but again, like even that, that like that's you're all here, you really or it's see, like you don't see him kind of right. Thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, this is a rather very short movie, for, especially for Marvel. It was two hours and five minutes. I was That's, fine with the runtime. I, I, no, I, I thought what the movie was. Also, runtime, I don't was, was expect fine. it to be like three hour movies. Like Endgame, I'm saying, like, even add five, ten more minutes just to add like a little bit extra, you know, meat to the movie. Well, yeah. let me first for, for some scenes. Let me bring up one scene that I thought was spectacular. And that was the scene where Gore had captured Muddy Thor, Valkyrie, and Thor. And was going yeah. on his monologue for five minutes while they were, you know, encapsulated yeah, yeah, in yeah. veins. Like, yeah. I was just so, you know, locked in to hearing what this this man was saying and trying to back up his reasoning. I thought that was when Christian Bale was just doing incredible yeah. Christian Bale acting. It was scary. Yeah, 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 it was yeah, yeah spooky. Yeah. It was awesome. And, and honestly, call and the axe. When, that was so yeah. cool. Call the axe. And, and what honestly I, I loved was how again going back to how creepy he made god the butcher for christian bale um the scene that really stuck out to me doing that is when the kids are talking about how thor's coming to, to or uh axel is talking about some other stories that uh you know about the word you hear yeah, this so creepy evil laugh in the dark and it's, it's like, like a this, pennywise almost i was literally just gonna say it literally reminded me of pennywise i i don't i hate you know those movies and everything and no, no, i'm sure on, they're no. very well done <laughs> but um, but again, it just it reminds me from what, how much I've seen of of it and everything. It reminds me so much of Pennywise, just a very creepy character, and it, it was it was awesome though. It was yeah, two seconds it. ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about the Mighty Thor um, with regards to Jane. Um, how about we jump directly to the end? Actually, I, oh. that's actually that's where I actually wanted to jump to it too, because I was actually going to jump back to what Jeff was saying with the kind of being too funny kind of too comedic i feel like because of that some of the more deeper parts of it like her with cancer yeah um her at the end kind of thing 
I feel like those didn't hit as well. And maybe yeah. it was just me just sitting there. I feel like then it hit maybe the audience or just me in general. Just I didn't feel like as as emotional response to as you should have the been. end. Yeah, that you would have thought you would have had. And that's the problem with with Marvel, and and not it's not just a Marvel problem where these properties present a very deep and touching scene, but then immediately crack a joke to break the tension. Like yeah. here we have this scene of Jane Foster dying, and then thirty seconds later we have Thor. And Gore's daughter talking about eating pancakes. It's like it's like let me resonate in that really yeah. impactful And maybe moment. it's it, maybe it's just because they quickly went to the cancer thing at the beginning, yeah. and then they don't they bring it up with little bits here and there, mm-hmm. but you don't really. I feel like you don't really feel too sad or too bummed. No, oh. and spoiler, here's the reason why. Does. Yeah, here's the reason why I didn't feel as sad. And, and again, this is no disrespect to Natalie Portman's acting, but I thought. I just don't like Jane Foster as a character that much, you know, and I just don't think she had a really good connection in the earlier films where this death was impactful. Like watching Tony Stark die in Endgame packed a punch because we saw this character for several years go through ebbs and flows. With regards to Natalie Portman, we saw her in two movies that were, you know, her role was pretty flat. So when she died in this movie, why am I? Why should I be upset by that when there's not a good enough foundation yeah. for that? Why should we feel really better? Point? Why should we feel more about the relationship between the Thor right. and Mighty Thor, the two of them, mm-hmm. when it's not really? It's very jokey. It's very kind of yeah. She's trying to figure out a catchphrase on like movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I was literally saying that was one of my other. That did not hit at all. It, it, I thought that was it, really. I, that, that really yeah, that wasn't great. And, and just the especially when it's like the. the Climax in the movie is during this huge fight with Gore the Butcher, and all of a sudden you hear, you know, uh, Mighty Thor saying, you know, uh, eat my hammer or my whatever. Hammer. Oh. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, come on, man. Uh, there was before we kind of get to the ending you know, with with Jane, of course, there, uh, and also kind of post credit scene too. Uh, I I'm still indifferent about the scene. I thought it was cool, but at the same time, I I don't know. I felt different. How did you feel about the scene when Thor essentially helped give the kids the power of Thor okay. temporarily? Yeah. I'm really glad you brought that up. I'm going to make two points. One, I, honestly, I don't know how to feel about it. Yeah. I really don't. So I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Let me. Let I, me. I'm, mm-hmm. I want to bring up yeah. two points. One, I'm going to give Marvel the benefit of the doubt. It is impossible for the MCU to construct a you know multiple movie storyline for the past twelve years. And make it all make sense. I get that. That's really hard to do because you can't see in the future and know what you're going to do. Secondly, I'm going to go against them. When you introduce a power like this, where the frick was it for, for the past 12 years? How helpful yeah. would it have been against that, Thanos' that's army if you gave all these heroes the power of Thor? You know, why are you just yeah. using this power now? Where was it? When you know Thor was going up against yeah. the Dark Elves or, or, or the Frost yeah. Giants or whatever, it was, it came out of nowhere. It really did. Or and then again, like, and, and so, yeah, it's just I don't know. So, so I, I definitely agree with that second part. Um, at the same time, it's like I get it. He, you know, obviously needs help or anything, but it's like just in general, it's like the only reason those kids ever even stood a, a chance of against his, you know shadow creatures because they got the power throw other than that it's like you know i, I thought it's kind of neat to incorporate oh they're not just here for if they got captured they can't have a chance to get rescued they get rescued i thought it was somewhat neat that they actually I agree. Got still a little I agree. bit more than that but then when you see a kid waving a teddy bear around and <laughs> yeah. sliding down you know shadow monsters i'm like yeah. come on guys like you made this somewhat even whatever relatively cool part you can have made this it's kind of ridiculous now and where was valkyrie in the fine why did they why did they choose the writers to to handicap her and not have her in the finale i, I feel like yeah why valkyrie, does she not come back but jane come back right well it, i it, guess it's, i guess the explanation is jane had the mjolnir who could right. cure health when valkyrie didn't have anything to cure health now i will say though one thing i thought that was very neat and it's just this detail is when Jane was wielding uh, Mjolnir, it literally drained her health and made her all, in a way like sicker. It looked like because like the more power she used from Mjolnir, at least that's how I interpreted it from the movie. And that's correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, um, the more she was using Mjolnir, the the like the the worse her condition got. 
what was the ex? But what was the explanation for that? Because we've seen. I think too. I think the thought of that was, I guess, when she, Thor was talking to the doctor, where it's like, there's something that's preventing the medicine or something from her body fighting the cancer. I think that's what it was. And the thought is maybe the Mjolnir is the reason why it's not. So, is which, it which is assumed, interesting. Is it assumed that Mjolnir does this to anybody who possesses the hammer? Because that didn't Any- happen to Thor. That didn't happen to Captain America. It didn't cap- happen to Vision. Why did, did it just happen to Jane Foster because she's human with no? That, that's, that's the abilities? only thing I can think of. Yeah, it just felt like a weird yeah. storyline that wasn't backed up with logic. It wasn't. Um, I mean, yeah. it's just because she was already sick to begin with. I don't yeah, know. you know, like, maybe I, it was like she know. was like stage one or two cancer maybe because she was stage four i don't mm-hmm. know do we all agree that they should have killed korg off when he originally died yeah. yes 100%. it would have been like, fu- like just kill him off like you know i they i know that he's a funny character and i know taiki uh taika watiti voices him so but it's like come on man that. and again we only got obviously besides gore we only got one major death and that was technically jane foster and even then but she could come back i mean like i could see them in a future movie find a way to bring her back any more final thoughts on the movie itself before we start talking marvel from a macro point of view so for me i just think if they were like giving it like a rotten tomatoes kind of score from zero to 100 i'm probably close to where rotten tomatoes has i'm probably about like 72 73 percent I was going to say I'm around I don't think 78. That's bad. I don't think that's bad. Yeah. I think that's just saying it's a fun movie. It's average. It's an average yeah, movie. It's an average yeah. fun to um, see category. Yeah. Tomato meter has a 67. The audience score is an 81. So I guarantee yeah. you those two have it. Why well, it's an 81 is because a lot of people w- either weren't prepared somewhat like myself to go into the movie thinking, oh, it's no, this is a comedy going into it. Because yeah. Again, you know, trying not to beat a dead horse here, but when I think of the mighty Thor, you know, Thor Odinson, I don't see him as a very comedic character. And also during my rewatch of Thor 1, The Dark World, Ragnarok, Infinity War, and of course, Endgame, you see, well, he's such an interesting character development throughout the year, but obviously the Avengers movies help a lot with that. You see what he goes through in the in beginning of Infinity War as well. He yeah. literally loses his entire family throughout his most entire of, yeah, most of movie Asgard. saga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's why I feel like if because at the beginning they, he has a scene with uh, uh, Chris Pratt or whatever, and he's trying to keep him at arm's length, which is a comedic kind of thing. I thought was right. too much or whatever. But if you just lean that in a little bit heavier, because obviously it's and even I saw like an interview where. Taika Waititi was saying that it's pretty much him in like a midlife crisis at this point. Yeah, that, Which, and that's a good way to phrase it. Yeah. You know, I, I, to defend, to go against Jeff's point that Thor shouldn't be a, a comedic character, you know, I'm going to make a comparison. I think Thor in some ways is kind of like Marvel Superman. We have an alien who has very powerful gifts, who comes to Earth, falls in love with an earthly girlfriend and does things to save the planet. Now, if you look at DC... They have no yeah. freaking idea what to do what to do with Superman right now. They they are lost. I don't know what to do with the universe in general. Well, that's fair, but I do think they've <laughs> had some they've had some projects like the Batman was really good. I thought Su- I no, I Suicide Squad that. was really good, and they, and they have some good too. stuff going there. But they don't. Is know that the newer Suicide Squad? Yes, yes, not the other one. Not yeah, the other okay. one. <laughs> not the Will Smith one. Not the Will Smith one. Yeah, just got it. But any but anyway, so when I going back to the Superman point of view, you know, Marvel decided to take this character that's not relatable at all like Superman, and make him comedic. They made Thor a comedic character because people can relate to comedy. So I do understand why they went down yeah, that can, route. I, now that you see it, I can actually see both comparisons because he also lost his home world at this point. Yeah, He's lost bingo. most of his home world. There's a lot of freaky parallels. So I don't that's have also an, just how the universe... There's only so true. much storytelling. So. I don't have an issue with them making Thor a comedic character. I don't- I-